Hershen Family Entertainment is a themed attractions corporation host to 25 different properties including theme parks, water parks, aquariums and much more. Based and operated in the United States, the company is the nation's largest family-owned themed attractions corporation having been owned by the Hershen family since its inception. As of 2019, the business entertains over 14 million guests each year by creating memories worth repeating in a manner that is consistent with the family's Christian values and ethics. Despite owning a range of properties, the chain is perhaps most famous for their theme parks, including Dollywood, Wild Adventures, and Silver Dollar City. In fact, it was the latter, Silver Dollar City, that would spark the formation of Hershen Family Entertainment over 70 years ago. The origin of Hershen can be traced back 350 million years ago to the formation of caverns within the Ozark Mountains due to deposits of limestone. One of these caves, eventually named Marvel Cave, had been discovered numerous times, but it was in 1894 when the cave would open as a tourist attraction. Half a century later, in 1946, Hugo and Mary Hershen visited the expansive cave. Having heard that the daughters of the original owner were looking to sell the cave, Hugo negotiated a 99-year lease on the land in 1950, becoming the owner in the process. The Hershen Company was born. Initially, the family set about upgrading and improving the caves in the attempt to improve visitor numbers. This led to a train being installed within the caverns, which brought guests from the depths of the cave to the surface, improving capacity and accessibility. By 1959, 65,000 people were visiting the property each year, generating over 200,000 US dollars in revenue. Naturally, it was time to expand. The Hershens created a small village near the cave, themed to an 1880s mining town. By building this, the family wanted to create a living community with a general store, blacksmith shop, ice cream parlor, authentic log cabins, and a church. The village was named Silver Dollar City in reference to the decision to give guests silver dollars as change to promote the new attraction. By 1964, the themed park attracted over 450,000 visitors, equating to 3 million US dollars in revenues. By this point in time, both Silver Dollar City and the Marvel Cave were being operated by Hugo and Mary's sons, Jack and Pete Hershend. After a multitude of successes and with Jack as the CEO, the brothers continued to expand their attractions, maintaining the Christian values at the heart of the company. By 1976, Silver Dollar City saw over 1.4 million annual visitors employing over 800 members of staff. It was time for the Hershen business to expand away from its birthplace. The brothers' sights fell upon a park in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, known as Gold Rush Junction. They purchased the park for $2 million in 1976, renaming it Silver Dollar City in the process. Though, the family found replicating the experience in a different region initially challenging. This ultimately discouraged the brothers from building more Silver Dollar City parks, keeping it to just two. As a result, the company instead expanded into the water park industry for the first time. Whitewater in Branson, Missouri opened in 1980, consisting of multiple water slides, rides, and pools. In the years following, Hershen would go on to open a further four white water parks in Oklahoma City, Grand Prairie, Garland, and Atlanta. However, over the next two decades, these four parks were gradually sold off to Wet n Wild, Premier Parks, and Six Flags. Despite this, the brothers gained a greater appreciation for dealing with multiple properties in multiple states. To help sustain the growing business, they also created a board of six people, only two of which would ever belong to the Hershen family. By including external opinions on major business decisions, the brothers hoped to ensure all developments were a positive move for the company. Although Silver Dollar City in Tennessee was initially successful, the popularity of the park soared after they secured a deal with Dolly Parton, a well-known country artist at the time. Dolly was made aware of the original Silver Dollar City Park in the early 1980s and after visiting, was inspired to open a park of her own in Tennessee. Instead, the Hershens approached Dolly, proposing a partnership between the two to operate Silver Dollar City in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. As a result, the park became known as Dollywood in 1986. Naturally, the 1990s saw the chain grow further, investing in new and exciting properties. In Branson, they built the Grand Theatre Palace in conjunction with Kenny Rogers, a 4,000-seat theatre. This was followed by the Grand Village Shops, an Ozark-themed shopping complex near the palace, and the debut of a second theatre in Pigeon Forge. However, overwhelming costs led to all three properties being sold in the years following. 
Nevertheless, by 1955, the company had become a big success, gaining over 100 million US dollars in profit and attracting over 1.7 million visitors to their Silver Dollar City theme park. In 1998, they entered a partnership with the state of Georgia to manage the historical Stone Mountain Park located near Atlanta. This was followed by the debut of Dolly's Splash Country, Dollywood's very own water park, in 2001. It was at this point that the company also partnered with Ride the Ducks, an attraction that used amphibious World War II vehicles to take guests on water tours. They quickly went on to expand the franchise to new cities before acquiring the business in 2004. A decade later, in 2017, it was then sold to Ripley Entertainment. However, during this time, Hershen saw a range of new CEOs come and go from the chain. Firstly, as Jack was getting too old for the role, they reached out to someone external from the family. Carrie Summers, a former Bass Pro retail executive, took on the position for seven years, brokering several deals, including the one to operate Stone Mountain Park. This was followed directly by Mel Bilbo, a former Disney executive who would go on to add a new park to the chain's portfolio, one that ultimately didn't succeed. In 1999, an amusement park named Branson USA opened to the public an eight-minute drive away from Silver Dollar City. The park struggled upon its debut, eventually closing in 2001. Looking to expand their offering, Hershen Family Entertainment purchased the amusement park in 2002 with plans to redevelop and reopen it to the public. As a result, the newly renovated Celebration City opened to guests in 2002. Through a 40 million US dollar investment, the park saw new rides, firework displays, laser shows, and a Route 66 theme. Overall, the company intended Celebration City to be a nightlife park, attracting visitors to continue their fun after visiting Silver Dollar City earlier in the day. To differentiate itself, the park opened at 3 p.m. and was free to the public, operating a paper ride scheme. Sadly, it failed to catch on. Miscommunication about the payment structure and the lack of popularity regarding the park itself led to its demise. Ultimately, in 2008, Hershen closed Celebration City due to a lack of profits. Though, before it opened to the public, Mel Bilbo left his role as CEO, being replaced by Joel Manby in 2003. The year after, the company officially gained the name we know today, progressing from Hershend in 1950 to Silver Dollar City Corporation in 1980, and finally, Hershend Family Entertainment in 2004. More recently, in 2015, Joel Manby stepped down as the CEO to become CEO of SeaWorld Entertainment, allowing for Andrew Wexler to take his position. Prior to the closure of Celebration City in 2006, Jack and Pete Hershend both retired from the company. Upon leaving, the brothers expressed their faith in the leadership team they had created and their hope for the business to remain family owned. The following year saw a major expansion for the chain, acquiring three new attractions. They purchased both Newport Aquarium and the Adventure Aquarium, as well as Wild Adventures, a theme park in Georgia. The park became the chain's third and smallest, featuring a distinct focus on animals. Though, after the failure of Celebration City in 2008, the chain decided against investing in large parks and attractions, instead opting to expand their smaller offerings. In 2010, the company continued to invest, constructing Dollywood Cabins, a lodging location in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. By this point in time, the Hershen chain as a whole had an annual attendance of 9.6 million from attractions in a handful of different states. Nevertheless, the business continued to expand. They entered a deal with CNL Lifestyle Properties to operate both Darien Lake and Elitch Gardens in New York and Colorado, respectively. Though, these contracts were short-lived, as operations of Elitch Gardens were transferred back to CNL Lifestyle Properties in 2013, while Darien Lake was sold to Premier Parks in 2014. Hershend also took an interesting step at roughly the same point in time by purchasing the Harlem Globetrotters, an American exhibition basketball team. When asked about the decision, CEO Joel Manby stated that it fit perfectly into the company's family-orientated operations. Most recently, the chain has continued to expand their attractions offerings, mostly in the form of new accommodation. Dollywood's Dream More Resort, a 307-room hotel and spa designed around family, togetherness, and the Smoky Mountains, opened to the public in 2016, whilst in 2019, they reached an agreement to operate and manage the Callaway Resort and Gardens in Pine Mountain, Georgia. 
As of late August 2020, Hershen Family Entertainment now owns or operates over 25 different properties which employ 10,000 members of staff and attract 14 million visitors annually. Most of these properties can currently be seen on the screen now, from the chain's three theme parks to their diverse range of accommodation offerings. You can view a standalone image of all of Hershen's properties via a link in the description below. But since we're big fans of theme parks, let's explore just those attractions in more depth. Since its opening in 1960, Silver Dollar City has continued to expand, gaining new roller coasters and distinct areas. Located in Branson, Missouri, the park's hillside forest setting provides a fantastic backdrop for its 31 different attractions. Being the company's oldest theme park, it's seen many changes over the decades, which have helped to refine the park's identity and atmosphere. Today, Silver Dollar City offers a wide range of rides and roller coasters for all the family to enjoy, as well as immersive and unique experiences themed to an 1880s Ozark village. Despite its long history, it's arguably the last decade that has placed the park on the theme park map. Attractions such as Outlaw Run, the world's first wooden roller coaster to feature multiple inversions, and Time Traveler, the world's first double-launched spinning coaster, have allowed Silver Dollar City to stand out on a national stage. Since purchasing the park in 1976, Hershend has continued to expand Dollywood at a rapid pace. Located in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, it's become larger than the chain's original theme park, featuring more rides and attracting a higher number of annual visitors. This, in part, has been due to the partnership with Dolly Parton and her involvement within the theme park. Currently, Dollywood features over 50 different rides and has always been eager to invest in exciting and unique roller coaster attractions. This includes Tennessee Tornado, often considered to be one of Aerodynamics' best looping coasters, Mystery Mine, a thematic roller coaster experience, Wild Eagle, America's first wing coaster, and Lightning Rod, the world's first and only launched wooden roller coaster. Similar to its sister park, the quality of the attractions available to guests have placed Dollywood on the theme park map. Hershen's most recent theme park acquisition came in the form of Wild Adventures in 2007. Since then, the zoological theme park, located in Clytesville, Georgia, has opened a whole host of new attractions. Guests can not only experience a range of roller coasters, but also see an assortment of animals. Though on a different scale and level of quality to both Silver Dollar City and Dollywood, Wild Adventure's charm and small town atmosphere attracts many guests from the local area. As a family business rooted deeply in Christian values, Hershen's attitude is different to most companies. The business will only progress in line with their values, which focus on four key areas. We greatly exceed guests' expectations, we serve others, we create emotional connections, and we constantly improve. All four of these greater areas, along with their mission statement, creating memories worth repeating, steer the company in a positive direction. Hirsch End Attractions have something for everyone, they help to serve the greater community around them, they hope to bring families together, and they invest in both people and properties to grow. By doing this, they aim to not only create an atmosphere that serves as a place for fun and entertainment, but also craft an experience that is memorable for all ages for years to come. At a regional level, Hershen Family Entertainment are one of the leaders within the industry for providing immersive family experiences. Though it doesn't seem that Hershen are looking to acquire any new major attractions anytime soon, the attractions they do operate are expertly run and well maintained. Their flagship theme parks, Silver Dollar City and Dollywood, are well loved by all, feature an atmosphere unmatched across most of the United States, and continuously see new investments. Silver Dollar City saw the debut of Mystic River Falls, a highly themed River Rapids ride in 2020, while Dollywood built an entirely new, family-themed area of the park, Wildwood Grove, in 2019. Hershen's values and attention to detail almost guarantee success with the attractions they already own and operate well into the future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time. If you enjoyed this brand new series, please consider subscribing. Also, which theme park company would you like to see us cover next? Let us know in the comments.